the impact of the victim's smile. I just love that special smile of yours. I know that the first time I saw you displaying it, that I wanted it for myself. I wanted to be the recipient of that smile, and I wanted it so badly. Oh, so very badly, that I went for you with a ferocious determination. I watched as it slowly formed, your delectable lips twisting, moving upwards and then parting to allow your teeth to be seen. Many animals bare their teeth as a warning to others to stay back, but not you. As you revealed your teeth and your smile widened into a grin, I watched transfixed. I could see the effect it had on those near you. I could see how they felt happier for seeing your smile. I detected it in their faces, in their reactions, and if I had been close enough, I have little doubt that I would have been able to hear their pleasure and joy as you allowed them to bask in the warmth of your smile. It was inclusive. You showed it to everyone, sat round that table, and nobody was missed out. You did not break into laughter. That would almost have been vulgar, and spoilt the scintillating effect of the way that you conveyed such emotion to others near you. I continued to watch from my position across the bar as the words of whoever it was I was with that night, I cannot recall now, became nothing but white noise. I only allowed myself to hear her expressions of irritation at how I became seemingly distracted by you. I made my excuses, feigning illness, and dispatched whoever it was I was with, I cannot recall now, into a taxi with an already broken promise to call whoever it was, I cannot recall now, and once that person, who I cannot now recall, had gone, I returned to the restaurant. I positioned myself next to your table, sat at the bar, and allowed myself to eavesdrop on the conversation that you were engaged in, as I enabled myself to obtain a closer examination of your smile. It appeared frequently, and never diminished in its brilliance. It was engaging, captivating, and I had to have it. With customary ease, I allowed myself to join your table once the dining had been concluded, on the pretext of making a point arising from something that you had said. I had already established from the body language around the table that none of the attending men were accompanying you, and the behaviour of the other women indicated they were no more than friends. No ring rested on your wedding finger, and you responded to my polite intrusion with a brief flash of that smile. I knew the drawbridge was down, and the portcullis was up. Accordingly, I made your smile mine, and how I reveled in those perfect lips as they moved into that glorious smile. I had known fuller lips, but yours were certainly not what I would call thin. Your left cheek dimpled when you smiled broadly, and thereafter I knew that your smile was only truly for me. Yes, you smiled for others, and I was proud of you for doing so, allowing them to experience it, but only at a fraction of what was reserved for me. I was the sole recipient of the full magnitude of that smile and its amazing effect. You conveyed so much to me with your smile. The times you smiled at me in support of admiration as I held forth at dinner parties, your appreciative smile when I did something for you, the sensual smile when you knew that our sexual congress was looming, the amazed smile when I stunned you with yet another example of my brilliance, your satisfied smile when you looked at me across the living room from where you were to reading a book, safe and content in our world, where your smile was mine and nobody else's. 
I relished seeing your sleepy smile when I turned to you in the morning and gently kissed you on the nose. I delighted when you contacted me using your video capability on your phone and you deliberately showed only your smiling mouth. Countless times I would record you doing so and then I would play the footage back again and again when I was sat alone and relish the sensation which poured through me as I watched. What made your smile so special was the fact that you gave it willingly to me. You told me that nobody had made you smile as much as I had. I took no issue with that, for I knew it was something that I was entirely capable of. Your sweet, illuminating smile belonged to me. It was engaged solely for me, and it existed just for me. I worked hard to ensure that your mouth gave me that smile again and again and again. It sustained me and invigorated me, turning a moment of potential weakness into one of edifying strength in but a heartbeat. I can truly say that nobody else has had a smile which has such an effect on me as yours. I saw what it did for other people, and I knew that they were only experiencing a small percentage of what I felt, because the true power and radiance of that smile was kept just for me, because you understood me, you knew how I needed it, and you were content and delighted to provide it to me. It was a brilliant smile, a beguiling smile, an admiring smile, a playful smile, an engaging smile, an enticing smile, an uplifting smile, and so much more. But above all, it was my smile, reserved for me. Most of all, though, I cherished your smile, because better than anyone else you knew how to hide everything behind that smile. I knew this is what you did, and I knew he began teaching you to do so all that time ago. I made sure that you continued to use your smile in that way. What he had begun, I completed. Now, that smile of yours that belongs to me, cloaked everything that the world did not need to know about. I made that smile completely belong to me.